situation. What about how you motivate guys, Mark? I yeah. mean, listen, yeah, yeah. everyone knows you you stepped away with the Blackhawks, and you know some players came out. They had some comments. Listen, we had Patrick O'Sullivan on the show. Yeah, we've we had did. Sean Avery. Although Avery did say you're the second best coach he's ever had. I, we've had a lot so of people. I, I, I don't think about you. I, I don't you think his <laughs> his I don't think his comments were meant to like you know crush you by any means. Um, at least personally, but like Brent Stumble yeah. made some comments. Listen. When you when you stepped aside, how much soul searching did you have to do? How much have you changed? And and how do you look back on some of the tactics that you that you used to do, and, and some of the comments that some of these guys have made about you? Well, uh, again, like you know, it, it, I, I'm human, and uh, some of the hum- comments really hurt. Mm. Uh, but you know, I had reflected on how I was really after I left Los Angeles. Uh, uh, of all the jobs that I had, the one that I was not very proud of was the job that I did uh, in Los Angeles because I thought you know I I was probably at that time still living in an age where uh, it was pre-lockout and the lockout uh, changed things because the salary cap came in when the salary cap came in um, you now could not get rid of your your problems Uh, where before uh, you could get rid of your problems because, you know, you could hide salary and you could hide uh, this. And oftentimes you could trade a uh, problem yeah. player away for someone else's problem right. player. And at least, yep. at least it was different. And I was stuck too much in that era and hadn't recognized that I really had to do a good job of making the players that I had the best that they could possibly be. And so when I left Los Angeles, I really started to, to do a lot of soul searching. And I thought I really tried to change um, my tactics. And I thought, you know, like uh, in Dallas, I did that. I thought I did a real good job of that, or at least a better job of that. When I went to Europe, obviously, that changed me for the better uh, as well, because you go to Europe and smaller staffs, I got back to the roots of coaching. And, uh, you know, I had to do a lot more stuff for myself. And there's a lot of extra practice time and development time and that sort of thing over there. So that really helped me too. I I became much more um, diversified, a little bit better balanced. And I did a lot of work, um, uh, you know, with uh, uh, some psychologists and some people that I had talked to to about how I was as a person and why I was uh, the way uh, that I was. And as it turns out, that was really helpful. So, you know, uh, it's not a surprise uh, that there are certain players that, that didn't like me. Um, at the time I was a very demanding guy, but I, I will say this. I don't think I ever tried to do anything to anybody that was trying to, to make them feel bad. Unfortunately, I've learned a lot more about triggers. I've learned a lot more, uh, about the proper way to, uh, uh, to speak to people, to ask the right questions, to be more, um, attentive for, uh, possible problems and that sort of thing. And I think the players have become a lot more comfortable at speaking their mind too. Uh, you know, uh, whether that's a, a good thing or a bad thing, I think players have, uh, have done a real good job of, of, of taking a little bit more um, control of their own uh, careers and their own lives. So consequently, one of the byproducts of that is you're going to have a lot more uh, discussions, but I always felt that uh, that was something that I, I did. Um, and I always felt that at the time, you're always going to have some players that didn't like you and some players that, that did like you. And then you were, your job as a coach was to make sure that you uh, had uh, more of the people uh, listening to you and, and trying to do the things that you wanted to do as, as a team than players that were basically just shutting you off. So um, I feel pretty strongly about how I did in, in my career uh, that way. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we all learn. And I'm still learning today, and I'll continue uh, yeah, to, sure, to, sure. To, to learn. I've got you know my daughter now is a is a sports psychologist. She's ooh, over ooh. doing her doctorate in uh, Bath, England. So she's worked with a lot of teams, and she has been so wonderful for me uh, because you know she uh, uh, she'll oftentimes bounce things off me, or I'll bounce things off her. And I'll tell you what, she was a godsend uh, when I did have those problems last year because we talked it out her and i a lot and um you know it it made a lot of sense of what was happening and again i try to to make amends for any of the wrongs that uh, 
uh, that I've, uh, I've done and I've reached out to, to everybody. Some guys have been real good and really gracious and other guys don't want to talk to me, but that's, that's, mm, good. that's, that's their, that's their prerogative. And, uh, you know, all I can do is just, uh, continue to say, um, uh, that, uh, it's an open door for me and I want everybody to feel good yeah, about Mark, themselves. Dude, and, Mark, 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 we talked to, dude, we do our research on you, man. And, and we talk to guys, they, they, they love you, dude. Like, honestly, <laughs> yeah. they, they love, yeah, just, just so you, no, 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 just so you know. Okay. Like we yeah. all fucked up, man. We, I, Andy said stupid shit the other day and I almost smack, smack him. <laughs> no, but the, the, we all do. And you have to kind of like. Groove with the guys and what's we we get it, man. But we well, talk you know, a lot listen, of guys. I mean, they the, love it's, you. It's dude. happened with a couple other coaches, as we know. Yeah, like this was like kind of a storyline that was going on. But so, so was that hard though, Mark? Mark, when you stepped aside though with the Blackhawks, was that like a low point? Like were guys reaching out to you, former players, coaches? Like who helped you get through that? Like how difficult was that? And what, did you think your coaching career was over? Like did you think that the Blackhawks were going to give you another opportunity to come back? I got to tell you this. First of all, the Blackhawks were outstanding with me, right from the top. Uh, Stan Bowman, um, president at the time, uh, John McDonough was terrific with me. Al McIsaac, um, everybody in the organization stood by me. The players were unbelievable in Chicago, you know, because they were, first of all, half of them couldn't believe it because you know, I, I have changed uh, an awful lot from when I was the fiery. Uh, coach that you see in the um, in the Detroit Red Wing, Colorado. Yeah, I like that guy uh, though. Videos, <laughs> but uh, uh, but you know they were terrific. Guys like Robert Robin Leonard was just uh, outstanding. Um, you know I, I I'm forever thankful that uh, those guys had my back uh, because I've been around long enough to know that coaches don't always get the backing of players the way that I got the backing of it. And you know right from players that played. Uh, for me in Vancouver, to people in L.A., to people in Dallas. I mean, I had so many people reach out to me. That was just terrific. And I can remember saying that, you know, this is great that everybody's reaching out to me. I hope that people are reaching out to the guys that had it, uh, had been doing the complaining. And I hope that they're reaching out to them because everybody I'm needs to. i got to ask you an unfair question, but you got to answer it, though, Mark. I mean, you've, okay. got, you've got Sackett, you've got Forsberg. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, listen, one of those two guys have to be. I was going to ask this right question, there, Andy. God damn right, it. I mean, best players you've ever coached. I mean, you've had Kane. You've had some great players in Vancouver, too. But, like, who who, who was the most important player to that team? Like, Forsberg, Sackett, yeah. did they lead differently? Did they mean different things to the team? Like, Forsberg. was it about them Ooh, being baby. collective? Like, break down the importance and the significance of those two guys individually. Excuse his voice. I know. Uh, you know what? They're all they're all really important. I would say Patrick was the most important because he he could impact the game every game, and he did yeah. uh, most times. So, um, you know, as as forward, it's harder to impact each and every game in such a positive way, like the like the goalie can. Uh, you know, I always say, geez, you know, my job was unbelievable. I always had that tough decision: do I start Sackick? Do I start Forsberg? Sackick, Forsberg, Forsberg, Sackick. Which one should I start? You know, so Doesn't it was matter. great having a one-two <laughs> punch when really at the time they might have been one and two in the National Hockey League at the center position. They were that good. They were certainly in the conversation in the top five uh, in the league uh, through the time that I was there. And they were both, they were both so wonderful. Patrick, you know, he's a, he's a demanding personality. I, I got along with him terrific uh, because his his uh, his values and what he thought the game, how the game should be played was exactly how I thought it should be played, too. And coaches usually do think more from a defensive standpoint yeah. than an offensive standpoint. But, you know, uh, thankfully, I had those two other superstars who they were so low maintenance. Oh, my God. And, you know, I've had a lot more. Uh, superstars who you earned your money uh, coaching some of the superstars uh, yeah. in the game, but Joe and and Peter were were marvelous. They How were how nice is that? They though? were unbelievable. It was nice. I got to tell you, I was <laughs> why why I ever left. I don't know. My wife still she still to this day she says, "Oh, you you're chilling on a dock awesome. right now. You're okay. <laughs> you're, who are you kidding? Wait, did you leave on your own? Yeah, like, did you leave on your own, Colorado? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, at the end, we had a contract dispute. 
And uh, I just felt that it was time for me to leave. I was young. I was stupid. And I, uh, uh, I decided that there were a couple of openings that I thought I would have an opportunity at. And uh, that, that was probably the right thing to do at the time. So, yes, I did leave on my, mo- on my own, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as positive a, 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 a departure as, as maybe I, I should have made it. Wow. And, and I take responsibility uh, for that because, you know, uh, I'm young and I'm a little bit, uh, I was young at the time and I was a little bit uh, too full of myself. And I think uh, with a little bit more wisdom, I would have recognized that the grass isn't greener on the other side of well, the street, well, especially when you're not living in Colorado. With no, that's exactly, Peter Forsberg. I'm that's saying exactly that you, yeah. you left your house in Aspen. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, but it, did you guys, hey, did you ever, and you were young too, but like when Patrick would, did he say anything? Like, I know you mentioned that he didn't, wasn't very talkative in the locker room, but did you have anything with him? We are like, I got to calm him down a little bit. He's doing too no. much in the media. I got I to gotta, I gotta put my foot down. No, he was, uh, he was great. Um, the one time that I, I, I upset him was I pulled him on a five-on-three. And this is when he was chasing the record for Terry Sawcheck, you got to oh, remember. Boy. And so I pulled him. We score the goal. He doesn't get the win. Oh. He was so mad after the game. So I, I said, oh, i got to solve this really quick. So I just went to him. I said, Patrick, I'm sorry. I, I really didn't um, didn't really think about it. You know, I, I, I shouldn't have done it. Um, you know, I know you're chasing it. I know it's important to you. And he just, it's a good thing I did it. Because he turned to me and he says, you need a timeout? I'll get you a call. It's a timeout. <laughs> 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 I, I always remembered that, but uh, you know he was good. Uh, you know, I I recognized very early that uh, he knew a lot more about goaltending than I knew, and uh, he was he was just uh, really good with me. I never, I can honestly say that was the only at the time ever that we had anything, and he was great to me uh, right from the start, uh, right to the end. I, I certainly admire him as a player, and I've talked to him a number of times uh, since, and I still admire him. I think he's a, he's a great hockey person. You coach one of the most entertaining games, probably the most entertaining game ever in hockey. I mean, if you look up the poll, they did a poll the other day about the Detroit-Colorado brawl. What was the lead up to this? And I, we had Claude Lemieux on Claude. I should call him because I called a bunch him, of guys. We though. called him Claude, yeah. but I called him Claude. It yeah. is what it is. And you knew what was going to happen. Like, how was that in, the anticipation for this whole thing? Like, were you talking to the guys before the before the game? Like, explain the whole uh, setup leading into that that crazy game. Well, we had played so well against uh, the Red Wings that year. The year before. Uh, we we won uh, our first year in Colorado. We won the first game, which was the very first game uh, in Colorado. We beat the Red Wings 3-2, and then they waxed us every other game the rest of that year. So when we played them in the semifinals that year, we were uh, hugely respectful of them, and we knew we had to be at our absolute best to, to beat them. And, you know, the, the, the Claude uh, Draper hit kind of was the capper at the at the end, and that kind of was a little bit of the – the prelude to the next season. But really, if you think about it, Claude had beat them four straight with New Jersey the year before, yep. and he was the consummate trophy winner. So I think that they've had enough of Claude <laughs> two years in a row. Um, and uh, and we got to that, that uh, fourth game. It was the last game we were playing against uh, the Red Wings that year, and we'd won the previous three. And we beat them actually pretty handily. And we got out, if I'm not mistaken, we were out to a 5-1 to one lead um, when the brawl erupted. And, uh, you know, it, it really was a galvanizing uh, happening for the Red Wings. Uh, so, you know, they were they finally got uh, to Claude and, uh, and Patrick came out. Uh, Patrick got a little bit hurt in the in the fight. Yeah, he did. Um, and that was a, a part of why we were never the same. But the biggest thing that I remember was McCarty um, should have gone through and out of the game. And, uh, uh, and I complained and complained and complained, as I was apt to do in those days, that he should have been thrown out of the game because yeah. it was, absolutely was an instigator. He, you know, with with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, McCarthy, and uh, 
and it was uh, Dvorsky, who's, who's a good friend. And he was the referee. I remember when he retired, I said to him, you know, I'd, I'd argued with him all the time. I said, you made those guys because you didn't throw them out. He ends up scoring the goal in overtime. It made them. It galvanized the Red Wings. The Red Wings now had uh, the toughness thing answered. And that was, you know, before us, that was always the question. Whether mm-hmm. It wasn't whether they were good enough. It was whether they were tough enough. Yeah, yep. And, uh, you know, Shanahan and, and McCarty and, and all those guys, Maltby, everybody, the they point. all played a part in it. Yep. The point, they all played a, a big part in it. Uh, but uh, uh, so anyways, getting back to the story about Devo, uh, I, I, I sent Devo. And so I'd, I'd complained to him and complained to him that that should have been him. And every time I'd see him, I said, you should have thrown him out. You gave him the cup, blah, blah, blah. So I, I sent him a, a congratulations note when he retired. <laughs> and he sent me back he, uh, this note. He says, thanks, Crow. I really appreciate it. Always fun having you. He says, by the way, I should have thrown him out. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he admitted it nope. years later. But it, yeah. It, yeah. It, it screws you over. But as far as hockey's concerned, that was oh. the most unbelievable game oh, yeah. ever in existence. I'm- 